Good evening. Welcome to It's Happening Out, the world's most popular live gay television show, and it's 8 p.m. Wednesday, October 14th, 2020. I'm your host and moderator, Chef Josie, taking over for Al while he's out of town. Before we get started with the show, we would like to announce that Happening Out Television Network will sponsor the National LGBTQ Vote 2020 debate and Smackdown on Friday, October 16th at 7.30 p.m. live. Watch this. The pre-show will include a debate between me and the infamous South Beach Trump supporting drag queen Elaine Lancaster. The debate itself will feature some of the greatest LGBTQ conservative voices in America from hashtag walk away and Americans for Trump, including founder and guest host tonight, Brandon Strzok. They will debate the vote. 2020 issues with liberal hosts from Gay Town Hall, including our other guest host tonight, Taisha Best. You can participate in person at the uh, at the event being held in the gayest place on planet Earth here in South Florida, or you can participate in the event live virtually. It will be an outstanding opportunity to make the decision for November 3rd. The National LGBTQ Vote 2020 debate and SmackDown will be moderated by its happening out moderator, Al Ferguson. So make sure to tune in. So welcome, America. We are going to have a fun and uh, entertaining show. I can't wait. Thank you for joining us. And it's time to get started with It's Happening Out. This week on It's Happening Out. Join us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It all starts right now, live on It's Happening Out. So good evening again. You are watching the world's most popular live gay TV show. So many of your stories next on It's Happening Out. We're live and unedited. Anything can happen. This is the world's most popular live gay TV show. If you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for updates. On Facebook, like and share the video and start a watch party. It's easy. Here's how. Just when viewing our live show in your app, please click share. After clicking share, your screen should change and you can then click watch party. On the next screen, you can write text to your viewing audience and then click start watch party. You've done it. Enjoy your party. Let's have some fun tonight and let's begin with the meme of the week. When you see a thick ass in public, Hmm. Let's watch this. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys see about this, huh? When you see a big thick ass in public, but you don't want to go to jail? <laughs> That's like Moe's thick ass. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, next we play our game of yes or no with I'd Swallow That. Our host will be asked for questions. If they agree, they take a shot. If they disagree, they don't take the shot. Uh, this is what we play every week. So for all of you guys at home, please follow along. I hope you have your chosen beverage. And uh, well, is everyone else ready here? Let's do this. Okay, then let's play I'd Swallow That. Oh, glass. Let's check it out. Okay, first question. 
I think Friday's happening out LGBTQ political debate is important. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's it? <laughs> okay, I need to tell the people at home mine is water. Okay, for people who know me, mine's water. Agua. Yes. All right, so did everyone take the shot? Oh, yeah. And who, wa who wants to get into this? Why is it important to you, Mo? No, I think it's very important. I mean, we all have differing <laughs> opinions. I have friends all over the spectrum politically and all over the spectrum, whether they're straight or gay, bi. And we, we just need to be able to have normal discourse. We don't have that anymore. And I'm even guilty of it. I have alienated some friends where I just can't, I can't with them. But, uh, and I'm guilty of that. I, I should do better at reaching out and being more accepting, but some people really grind my gears. But you know. Yeah, and I, I know Taisha, you know, you're you're our guest host tonight. You're gonna be participating in that debate and we get to hear your insight and perspective every Thursday night on Gay Town Hall. So why is it important to you? Um, for me, it's to normalize seeing LGBTQ people on the news. It is often a surprise when people like Pete, Mayor Pete, are on a national TV show. And what I would like to see more of is more of our representation so that we can bring more awareness to the issues that specifically impact us directly so that that message is brought across louder to our government and also to our peers who are not under our spectrum. All right. And, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're Brandon, you know, you're also participating in that debate and, you know, you're going to be representing the hashtag walk away and we'll get into that a little bit later. But why do you think this debate is important? Well, I think it's hugely important because, you know, part of the reason why, well, one of the main reasons I walked away from the Democratic Party in 2017 is because I realized that so many of the reasons why I hated Republicans and hated Trump supporters and hated Trump himself were based entirely off of media fabrications and lies. And so what I want to, what I hope to accomplish with this debate is to uh, really pull, pull the lid off of, I think, a lot of these mistruths that have been perpetuated on our community by the media and show people people that they really don't have to be afraid that we live in a new age we live in a new day and listen if you're an LGBT person and you're telling yourself or other LGBT people that the only choice you have to be is a Democrat that you are your own oppressor I'm here to offer more choice more freedom and more opportunity to the LGBT community by telling them you can be anything you want to be in 2020 and well, I know, I know my brister there coming from Lakeland, Florida this evening. We have uh, DJ Power Infinity in our virtual world. I know that this debate is very important to you. And would you like to share a, a few of the reasons why? Well, all right, let me be, let me be real here. I think that this debate is important um, only in this context and in the sense that there are people that have not made up their minds. Um, most people have already made up their minds and are entrenched, especially as divisive as we are in this country, and, and, and where they're going to vote and what they're going to be. So for the people that have not made up their mind, this debate is very, very important because any conversation that can lead one way or the other, hopefully our way to the blue, but any conversation um, is very important for that reason. I will say one other thing. I have done a charity um, when it comes to this debate. Al was um, Al had asked me to be in this debate. He, I was one of the first people he asked to be in this debate. And y'all know my motherfucking mouth is nasty as hell. So I declined, which you're welcome. I declined. <laughs> I know if it was me, honey, right at this point in time, I'm not ready for no civil discourse. I'm just ready to get this bitch out of office. And I ain't trying to debate nobody. It's a straight up read if I get involved. So more power to all y'all. Hey, well, listen, I appreciate your honesty, girl. Okay, because that is what this is about. And there is power and authenticity. I'll tell you that. Uh, so, you know, our next, our next I'd Swallow That is um, I have hate fucked someone because they were just too oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. sexy. Hey, wait a minute. I know that guy. 
<laughs> you ain't even have to finish the question. Look, that's my friend. <laughs> you didn't even have to finish the question, honey. I, I already got that down. I'm just gonna say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Remember, there's power in authenticity this evening on It's <laughs> Happening Out. So, so who wants to start off? Uh, who's hate fucked someone just cause, because they were just too sexy? I'm sure I have. I'm 50 years old <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Uh, I can say that I definitely hooked up. Uh, this is, I, I, I'm also of a certain age, so this is going back uh, a, a few generations. But I definitely hooked up with somebody who um, he just had the nastiest attitude, and oh my god, I could like really could not stand his personality. But he was hot as hell, and um, <laughs> and uh, and I fantasize all the time about hooking up with some uh, bitchy, loudmouth liberals and setting them straight. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm also <laughs> drinking to the future. <laughs> that, that is so that is so funny because I have the same fantasies about about. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we have more in common than you know. <laughs> okay. We're all horny. For us. Trust right. that. Anyone else? I you know I happen to be a sadist and a masochist and hate fucking, aka angry sex, is the, one of my superpowers. I think. <laughs> um, as someone who periodically sits in the asexual spectrum and like is a hundred percent successful with masturbation, every once in a while I will roll the dice and pick someone up, or you know do the whole anonymous thing. And some of them, I'm just like, oh, you're a brown bag special, and also a duct tape thing. Wow. No, mm. but. Damn, wow. thank you for the orgasms. Come again. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Well, listen, okay. If, if, <laughs> if you hate fucking yourself, that sounds like an issue for a psychiatrist. Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> Some people do wake up on the wrong side of the bed, and that, that's nothing that a hundred dollar Hitachi cannot solve. I've been there. <laughs> Where is Aaron when we need him? <laughs> this seems like his conversation. Oh hey, boy. Hey. Right? That 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 angry sex is trending. Okay. So you know some of the, the next question is some of the best sex I've had didn't involve penetration. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just ripped that out of my ear. <laughs> All right, perfect. So who would like to start this one out? I, you know, Mo, I'm gonna come to you on this one, okay? <laughs> you did take the shot, right? Um, I did take the shot. Okay, so oh so tell us about it. My mouth I'm, is I'm, a I'm wonderful curious. tool. You know, I'm a stunning kind of linguist. You know? Oh. <laughs> okay. That was that was pre. Pretty Mo cool. that we know now. Yeah. <laughs> and now that I got a beard, I'm allowed to grow a beard on the department. You know, it's you know got the little tickle effect and everything. So yeah, that's a whole other topic on the show: growing beards in the department. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, there's a lot of daddy fantasies. I think probably <laughs> uh, circulating at the moment. Um, what about you, Power? Did you drink? Some, yes, I, I go. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, some of, some of the best and the longest sex that I've ever had have been <laughs> out in a patient, you know. But, um, I mean, besides having sex with myself, when, when it comes to having sex with other people without penetration, really, um, <clears throat> when you really think about it, I mean, it's all been kind of penetration anyway, because if a dick goes in your mouth, that's penetration. Uh, if you're French kissing somebody and it's all about that heavy foreplay, that's kind of penetration. So. I mean, we've had, I've had great sex without actual sexual intercourse. Hmm, good point there, good point. Yeah. Taisha, I, I can see your face there. I know you have something to add Listen, to this conversation. It doesn't just happen at band camp. It also happens <laughs> in my dorm room. So there were times where I would miss my 8 a.m. music theory class because me and the Hitachi and the X-Tube and all the hashtags, an X-Tube would have a rip roaring time. So like power, I would be doing some marathoning, <laughs> fucking self-care. Self-care. <laughs> Back <laughs> milk. <laughs> and, you know, when we talk about um, not having penetrative sex, yes, I do love fisting, but also, you know, if you want to just flitty flit that little click click, I'm here for it too. So, <laughs> up. Hey, Brandon, are you feeling at home in this conversation right now? Did you? Oh, totally. 
No, yeah, no, I'm just sitting here thinking my conservative audience is going to get to know a whole other side of me when they watch this program. <laughs> um, uh, what was the question again? Oh, put it, yes. Uh, I, so, listen, I'll go ahead and just say I actually find it preferable. Um, I am somebody who's much, I much, much, much prefer uh, oral intimacy and things like that than I do to penetrative anything. And that's, I've always been that way. Yeah, you know, I'm going to add to this conversation for you all, you know, the reality of it is, is there something about the connection that happens in the intimacy, like you said, Brandon, of the oral, uh, you know, practice, right? And it's, you know, you can, I'll let your imaginations go, but the reality of it is, it's the, the teasing before we even get to that, you know, it's not always about that right not always about the penetration and uh well finally i think this is our final question this evening uh i have compromised my personal values for the betterment of others hmm. would you like me to repeat that hmm. uh so <laughs> i have compromised my personal yes. values oh, God, yes. for the betterment of others oh Shit. I actually drank because I was thirsty, not because I was answering that question. So I would I'm, also like to finish my alcohol. Forget about that. that. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I, I I did not drink to that to that question. So for for anyone who has, I think I just saw you, Taisha. When when do you think when do you think you uh, <clears throat> when do you think you did that? When did you compromise your personal I think values? Anyone who has compromised their values is probably because they were not self-aware of what their values, principles, and ethics were. So this would be probably in your younger years when you're trying to develop what your identity and sexuality is in the first place. And so there are often times to where you probably would compromise your values because you are not necessarily confident about the choices that you're making. Um, and that's okay. Life is a learning experience, <laughs> even with or without sex and with without oral penetration, because oral sex is also still penetrative sex. And, you know, and I, you know I applaud those who learn from those experiences um, in a way that helps empower them make better, more confident future choices. I can really appreciate that statement because I think I, I, I relate to what you're saying. Anyone else? I took a shot and I, I have to be honest, I interpreted the question not to be about sex uh, when I took the shot. Uh, and what I was thinking of when I, when I took the shot was that um, there are a lot of adjustments that a person has to make when they go from being say a liberal to a conservative and I'm sure I mean that's the direction I went I'm sure if it went the other direction that those people would feel the same way um, one thing that I had to adjust to was that uh, there's this there's this mentality for people on the right that we're all on the same team that if you're a conservative just by nature of two people being conservatives we're on the same team we're on the same side there should be no infighting there should be no uh, argument arguing things like that and I have per personally witnessed people who are on my team on the conservative side do some really despicable things that if conservatives knew the true nature of that person i think that they would be you know these are people that i'm talking about that you might see on television or people that uh people really look up to in the conservative movement and i've kept my mouth shut about it because i know that people would be very very upset if they knew the truth about some of their heroes and so uh for the betterment of keeping everybody on the same page going into an election i simply chose not to call anybody out when they probably deserve to be called out but after the election it's a whole nother story are we talking about lady grant uh so oh. there's so there's a book that i hear that will be coming <laughs> out right brandon yeah. okay great well kind of in uh, the you guys, dearest category yes you guys heard it here first and we'll <laughs> talk about principle in a moment but mo I mean, you know, if you think about it, right, when you were younger and maybe you were in that people pleasing, questioning what is and how you fit into the world. Did you, did you ever have that moment where you comp compromised maybe some of your personal values, as Taisha said, not necessarily in the sexual arena, but just in, in, in life, in life? I'm sure intentionally, no. I don't think anybody does that intentionally, or I hope they don't. Um, <laughs> I did it intentionally. <laughs> I did. <laughs> but I mean, I've 
done pretty much my whole life for the betterment of others, joining the military, um, joining the police force. Um, it's always one of the biggest things I've ever done was selfless service to others. And I enjoy, you know, serving the community and serving others. Um, but violating my personal values for the betterment of others, I mean, I'd really have to sit down with a shrink and think about that one because I'm pretty open-minded. So hmm. I don't think so. Hmm. And what about you, Power? you have anything to add to this? Yes, I do have something to add to it. Um, the question is, I have compromised my personal values for the betterment of others. Yes, I have compromised my personal values many times in my life. But every time I've compromised my personal values, it was not for the betterment of others. It was for my, self my <laughs> selfishness and my, my own um, temporal desires and carnal indulgence. So that's why I did not take the shot, because um, the personal values that I have um, now, I'm not going to compromise them just so, so somebody else can, can benefit or, or be better by. Um, I hope that I've grown and I'm continuing to grow um, so that I don't compromise my personal values for any reason, but most certainly I'm not compromising it for another bit to be happy. <laughs> Can I, can I ask a question though? Because I mean, I think everybody on this panel would agree that our personal, one of our personal values is to always be honest, to always be truthful. Oh, yep. <laughs> so no one on this panel has ever told somebody they look great in a dress when we, we know they look fat as fuck or that we know they look awful or whatever. Well, you but look we, great, girl. Yeah. <laughs> you look great. You work it, honey, you work it. I mean, I think that everybody compromises their personal values at times to avoid hurting people's feelings or just to be a nice person. but. You know, I, I think that's one example. We all do that. You, you, want, you want to know something? I mean, if, if you look at it that way, I can say that in my 48 years of life, maybe I've, I've done that. I can't, really, I can't really think of a specific thing or time to try to on me and my friends. We are very, very real. I'm very <laughs> real. If you don't look good and you're around me, me and my friends, are <laughs> girl, don't do it. We, that's one thing we pride ourselves on. Don't do it. We I agree with you, girl. Power. I I, I would just say, say like a, hey, look at you. Yeah, but you, you know, know what, like, guys? I'll challenge you. I'll challenge you right now because you just think about it in regards to maybe in, in reference to your families, right? And to our viewers out there. You know, sometimes like uh, maybe even when we were all coming out, right when we were all coming out in that coming out stage of life maybe we were not completely honest with everyone in our lives because we thought that if we came out and we were honest about who we were that it would like break our mother's hearts it would uh you know it would disappoint my father or it would you know so there's a lot of there's a lot of depth if we take a look at it and i know we're going a little deep on this uh this uh little it was a very swallow broad that question. question. My very broad story question. Story was not necessarily positive, and this speaks to me being honest. I <clears throat> had <clears throat> surgeries. I had my appendix taken out, and then they were like, "Oopsie, we meant your gallbladder." So they took my gallbladder out, and I happened to call my mother, and I was like, "Hey, mom. Um, me and John are both bisexual at the time. I thought I was bisexual, and then I was like, and also we're poly and kinky." And my mom was like, "We'll pray for you, um, John. Ecclesiastics, Deuteronomy." and I was like I'm good I have Jesus too like I'm a preacher's kid um, but I say that in the fact that I understood the consequences of my actions I was honest I was confident in my delivery um, and sometimes when we talk about whether or not I want to tell my friend if they are not looking their best selves I would think that there is enough trust and love in any relationship friendship or dynamic that I would want to be honest with someone if they are not looking their best selves um, not only for themselves but for others um, I think it would be a, a, I wouldn't trust someone to do something as simplistic as that why would I trust them to do something more intimate more vulnerable more influential so for me I'm like power I'm not gonna have my circle of influence be filled with people who I can't trust 
to tell me how my fashion looks. If I am wearing the wrong eyeshadow, if I have a booger in my nose, <laughs> if the color of my weave for the day is not matching my outfit, I expect for them to tell me and I will correct myself and I will thank yeah. them for their courtesy. Yeah, and so, you know, we're gonna we're gonna let that end this round of swallow that. You know, I'll swallow that. And until next week, you guys will just have to tune in to next week's round of questions. But now we're gonna catch up with news from Hollywood and the world of entertainment with our favorite topic, cele uh, celebrity hot topics. Uh, so first, our, our first celebrity hot topic. Uh, recently, the NFL celebrated National Coming Out Day with an amazing video. We've prepared a video, watch this. Today, on National Coming Out Day, we come together with one clear message to all current players who are thinking of coming out. When you are ready, so are we. I support you. I got you. We got you. We got you. <laughs> the highs, the lows. We're teammates, we're brothers. We support you. It takes all of us. All of us. It takes all of us. And you deserve to be all of you. National Coming Out Day is October 11th every year. The NFL created this amazing video encouraging players to come out and letting them know they are safe. What can all of us do to help others come out to us? Getting Out Television Network is broadcasting on our brand new set in partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church in Fort Lauderdale, Wilton Manors, Florida. We joke the gayest place on planet Earth and our support of their Sunday celebration is the largest LGBTQ religious broadcast in the world. It happens every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and we encourage you to tune, tune in. Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Watch this. This is Mo Lurito, local law enforcement in South Florida, and Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. We are also broadcasting from our set, courtesy of Concepto Modern Living here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, they help make our broadcast uh, from this amazing queer church campus possible. Our production team pays attention to many things that are interesting, and we call this segment the best thing of the week. Our best thing this week is titled it's a specialized skill. Watch this. There you go. So if you didn't recognize the people in that video, that was RuPaul's Drag Race star, Shangela, my favorite. Hi, girl. Hey. And, my sister, my sister, my sister. <laughs> and Senator Kamala Harris. What did everyone think of, of that? That was awesome. That was awesome. Just a relaxed time with uh, the common folk and fooling around and having fun. Who's you know? common? That's <laughs> I mean, I definitely enjoy the personable nature of that video. Yeah. Um, personable experiences allow for constituents, especially those who are independent voters, to feel like they are having a individualized experience with whoever is trying to vie for their vote. And so, you know, also fanning away the racist haters. Like, I'm here for that. I'm living. Hmm. Uh, I would say that I've seen all the empty seats at the Biden-Harris rally, so it's nice to know that she has one fan. <laughs> That's one fan more than one fan more than Trump had at his inauguration. So, um, 
<laughs> um, first of all, I, I really like this. I really like this, not because it was um, Sandra, who is my good friend, Judy and Kamala Harris, but like Taisha said, because it was the personal nature of the situation. I was not a big fan of George W. Bush, okay? But one thing about him is he was a very personable guy. He was a very charming guy. He was actually quite funny. And as a person, I actually liked him. And it's these moments that really show a human side of somebody that I think are, are really special. Regardless of what side of the aisle you fall on, I think it's really special to see that. Right. I just definitely enjoy, again, those experiences because it doesn't feel performative. And, you know, voters are very much scrutinizing every single moment of every single video they watch. And if they feel like it's been like performative or someone's been scripted or like any any kind of that kind of area, they'll they'll feel less um personal again personable less drawn to that person because they're just like oh they're just scripting this so that they can find my vote they really don't care about me as a person and no one wants to feel like a number no one wants to feel like that supporting actor that never gets the emmy you know you know i hear what you're saying there taisha and i'm looking at your face brandon and for some reason i'm 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 sensing that you're picking up a little theatrics um is that <laughs> what i'm sensing or am i just making things up here oh for sure i mean she's absolutely pandering and i mean for, for I, the, it seems to be working for the audience here tonight i guess uh going out there and flipping a fan around and, and hanging out with the people makes people forget the number of black people she put in prison for menial crimes and uh, the, the the absolute damage that she did to decimate the black community, not to mention the people in her own state. So I, I guess I, I hope that made up for it. So there you go. There you have it, guys. You know, I mean, we are seeing a lot of kabuki theater on all sides of the aisle. And uh, that takes me into what we like to move into our next segment. And we call this segment, What's on Your Mind? And uh, this will give each of our hosts an opportunity to tell us in just 30 seconds, guys. Okay, so uh, I know all of you guys can talk. <laughs> but tonight, this What's on Your Mind segment is just 30 seconds, okay? And uh, you're going to share with our, view our viewers uh, what's important to you this week. And so for you guys out there who are tuning in, uh, you know, this is, this is what's important to our host this week. Um, let's start with you, Mel. I seem to be first the whole time this, uh, this uh, episode. Yeah. But um, you know what? Just kind of like in debates, I'm going to go back to that whole crime uh, thing in Kamala. That uh, crime bill was put out in the 90s when the gang wars were going on in the United States. I was living in the West Coast uh, in California during the military and also in Washington State and I saw numerous soldiers that were in active duty involved in the gang violence and killed and I saw a lot of violence out there and that crime bill was designed for that. There was a lot of um, violent criminals out there and the um, Congress and the our legislators had to do something about that so that's where that came from so right. that's important to me being a law enforcement officer well 80 percent of the people hold were on black. hold on brandon <laughs> hold on hold on you'll get a chance so all right let's go with taisha next Thank you. I waited for my turn. So I think if we really want to talk about education concerning the criminal justice system, I definitely think everyone should check out the 13th on Netflix. And also, if you're not really interested in movies and would like a book, check out the new Jim Crow. The new Jim Crow talks about the evolution of the justice system and how it has be it's institutionalized racism and the statistics of black men, especially in jail. Um, just kind of verifies the fact that the colonialists who were slave masters kind of evolved in this system in a way that, you know, it is what it is now. And so trying to keep to my 30 seconds. But yeah, Jim thank Crow you. And the 13th. Thank you. And uh, Brandon, I know, uh, why don't you tell us what's on your mind? Well, it's changed within the last 20 seconds, what's on my mind. <laughs> but uh, what's on my mind right now at this very moment is that um, I, I actually agree that uh, the prison system is disproportionately uh, filled with a lot of people of color uh, who have been very negatively impacted by the Democrat policies that have put them there. And so I think that we should be incredibly grateful. And for anybody out there listening right now, 
Please get behind and support President Trump, who is a main proponent of the First Step Act, which has freed more than 3,000 people from prison, 91% of whom are African Americans. This is giving people a second chance, particularly people in the black community, helping put black families back together. And if this is what Kamala Harris puts black men in jail, President Trump gets them out of jail. And so really look into what you're supporting. If you believe in supporting black families, support President Trump. All right. Well, there you have it. 30 seconds. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll end with you, Power. What's on your mind this week? Well, I got, <laughs> what's on my mind is change as well. 30 so seconds, the, okay? 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah. I'll ring the bell on you, okay? Just 30 okay. seconds. <laughs> so, 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 look, the reason that it's easy to forget everything that Kamala Harris has done with regards to black men is because when you compare it to all the racism that Trump has shown in the last four years towards the black community, the gay community, the trans community, uh, women, uh, you know, um, Mexicans, it just pales in comparison. So if you want a, a Ku Klux Klan, vote for Trump, period. All right. Well, you know, guys, tonight on It's Happening Out, let's explore our... Thank you, everyone, for sharing what's on your mind. It sounds You're like welcome. there's there's so much more on your minds. I, I, I can't... And you know what? You should follow our viewers out there. Follow each and every one of our hosts this evening on their social media. Uh, look them all up. And, uh, you know, you have Mo Laredo and Brandon Stark. Uh, Strock. Strock, sorry. <laughs> and we have DJ Power Infinity and Taisha. Uh, Taisha Best and of course me Chef Joe so you can follow me as well and uh, just you know just know there's a lot more to this conversation than just the 30 seconds where you're a lot but we're we just want to give everyone an opportunity to share what's on their mind uh, so tonight on It's Happening Out let's explore our hot topics so our, our, our first topic this evening is only people like me matter have you ever heard that have you ever heard that in our community? Only people like me matter? Tribalism in the LGBTQ community. You know, we're, we're a, min a minority community who has broken into even smaller groups. And it seems those groups don't always get along. Politics and gender, body type, race. It seems like we identify ourselves in ways that exclude those different than us. What can we do to help rebuild the fractured, our, our fractured, fractured community? And do we have a responsibility to try and understand those with views opposite of our own? I'm gonna open this conversation up to the table and uh, I'd really love to hear from all of you. So who'd like to start? I can. <laughs> um, unsurprisingly, the thing that concerns me most about the division in our community is politics. And uh, I can say that uh, on both sides of the aisle, I actually don't really see that much um, uh, division in terms of things like uh, race or, or body type or things like that, but I see a horrible divide when it comes to politics. And uh, in, in my opinion, if your question is what do we do to solve that, uh, we really have to, to again, I think, pull the lid off of the, all of the misinformation and the mistruths, or, or it's not a mistruth, the misinformation that is out there right now, because we need to get to a point where uh, what we're really debating, I think, in the LGBT community is, is national policies and things like that. Right now, as it is, uh, here's an example. Last night, uh, or a couple of days ago in Nashville, Tennessee, a group of gay conservatives got together for something called Trump Pride, because the Trump campaign rolled out the first LGBT coalition called Trump pride. Um, it was a small group of gay men. There were probably about 20 of us there at that initial meeting. We took a picture together with uh, a Trump flag and an LGBT flag. We put it out on social media and we have been absolutely lambasted by the gay community ever since then. People calling us uh, self-hating, self-loathing, traitors, stupid, ignorant, uninformed, all of these different things. Now, you tell me, is it empowerment for the LGBT community to know that we only have one choice? We're only allowed one candidate? We're, we, we can't make up our minds. We can't think for ourselves. So that, to me, we have to start really getting to the bottom of why people are so afraid to be a Republican or a Trump supporter, and much of it is based in media misinformation, and the solution is to get the real truth out there. Donald Trump is not a racist. He's not a homophobe, but he's not a bigot, and it's not a bad thing to be a Republican. So, so let, me, let me be devil's advocate here, okay? And before we turn this into a political conversation, uh, I want to be really, I want to bring us back, okay? I want to bring us back to the conversation that is on the table in it's about tribalism 
And yes, politics clearly you just illustrated, Brandon, that uh, there are polar, polarized uh, perspectives about politics in our life. And that's, separa that's separating us into our little tribes within our own LGBTQ plus community. I think, uh, you know, I want to ask the rest of our, our host here at the table, you know, like I know that Mo, that you're probably experiencing that because you're a uh, active law enforcement, uh, you know, member of law enforcement and, and just what that experience is like in our community and, and you know, are you living in are you living in the closet so to speak when it comes to sharing what it is that you do every day uh within our own community um uh, when don't ask don't tell was repealed um by obama um that's when i came out of the closet and i just didn't come out i blew that closet door with grenades and c4s i came out um best day of my life it felt wonderful but going back to the the topic i think if you look at the Jewish community and how they always hold on to the history of the tragedies that have happened to them and kind of never forget, we got to kind of have to be like the Jewish community and kind of keep telling our younger LGBT members and showing them our history of Stonewall, our history of being arrested, our history of um, being persecuted, you know. Um, we can't forget that because I think it's too easy now for a lot of the younger folks when they come out, it, they just think it's always been this easy. They get on Grinder, they don't have to socialize, they don't even know what it's like to go cruising or go to a club anymore. It's everything's online. Um, and, but Mo, let me ask you again, you know, I'm playing devil's advocate tonight. You know, that's not really my role. I'm usually the neutral voice at the table. But I, I, I want to ask you, you know, when we're talking about tribalism and if we're speaking about uh, the Jewish community and the relationship between the Jewish community and our own history and keeping us like connected to that own history, are we not also practicing this form of tribalism, the LGBTQ community? Unity is just one tribe. I mean, we're not one tribe because that's what's happening. That's what we're talking about right now is that we're being broken up into all these other small, if you look like me, if you think like me, then I'm hanging out with you. Do you think that's trending in our community right now, Taisha? Actually, I don't necessarily think it's trending. Um, and when we say everything is political, I also don't think that's necessarily true because when people like George Floyd's mother goes and goes to the funeral parlor, she doesn't mark down on a funeral parlor uh, copy is that she's Democratic or Republican. You know, when other black people who are shot and killed by those who are in law enforcement, it, it, it's politics when it comes to it being on the news, but it isn't politics when we talk about the grieving communities who have to bury the, the next black person of which we now have a running list. You know, so, and when we talk about tribalism, I really don't like using that word because that word kind of belongs to the indigenous Indians of this country, which was stolen from them. I believe exclusionary is a much better word to use. And if we're going to talk exclusionary policy and also talk empowerment, it's one thing to take a picture showing your pride of LGBTQ. That's iconography. It's another thing to ask for empowerment and not given a seat at the table. So the Republicans will take your picture, but they're not going to give you a seat at the Republican convention, and that's been happening for years. So when we talk about empowerment, I'm also talking about not being performative. So the Republican Party can hold their pride parties and you know high five all of the LGBTQ communities, but when it comes to making and creating law and electing people who are LGBTQ, the facts on the sheet will show more than the pictures that are on social media accounts. I was an invited guest to the White House for the RNC convention, for the record, and Rick Grinnell, an openly gay man, spoke at the RNC convention this year. He's also the first openly gay cabinet member of any party, the Republican Party. Okay. Uh, Hooray, tokenism. Is, I'm glad tokenism is happening in the Republican Party. I think it should happen it just, a little more. It just you know, contradicted it's really your point. great that tomorrow they're absolutely maybe not a black person on your side of the panel, maybe a person of color on your side of the panel. Um, but I am happy to represent BIPOC people as a black and Panamanian person um, talking about issues as someone who actually is not a registered Democrat. But I that's actually not am tokenism. independent. So, 
so it's not tokenism when you do it. It's just tokenism when I do it. You're representing the, the black and Panamanian about, community, and that's not tokenism. So I Got consented it. to showing up. I okay. didn't consent to just be Just pointing out the double standard. So. Just, just pointing out the double standard. So you'd rather have zero than one, and that's great. I'm just saying that it's interesting that you call it tokenism when it happens on a side that you don't it's affiliate with. When white but when you do it yourself, is not when you do it yourself, it's called empowerment. It's called empowerment. Volunteer. It's just an interesting double standard. I was just pointing out it's an interesting double standard. So as you guys can see, see uh you're going to want to tune in to friday uh evening at 7 30 p.m when we have our uh lgbtq uh live debate and uh, this is going to be a, a very good conversation a very needed conversation um, and I think we just illustrated the point uh, you know if uh, we're in a space right now right power and I think you're going to chime in but I think we're in a space right yeah. now that if if you you don't think like me we just can't play on the same team and uh, how are we going to get through that well, I would like to actually take it back, you know, back out of just the politics, back to the actual core of the question. Um, you know, is there tribalism in our community? Yes. Um, just taking politics off the table in terms of the different themes that we have, the ballroom theme versus the pageant theme versus the circuit party theme versus the club theme versus the leather theme. But, you know, there is so much separation when it comes to um, when it comes to race in our community there is a lot of separation when it comes to um, ideology when it comes to body shape there's a lot of separation and it's funny because for me as a circuit performer I never used to it seems like there never used to be this much quote unquote tribalism or maybe I was just ignorant to it because of the fact that I feel that I was given what I call um, what I call borrowed, borrowed privilege, which is as a circuit performer, because you are on the stage and because you're in the spotlight, you get to intermingle with a lot of different sects and communities and groups of people in, in our LGBT community because they kind of look at you as a nightlife person, a, a nightlife celebrity, what have you. But if I step outside of my, my brand and my image, um, and I actually go into the actual community, I see that there is separation. I didn't realize that before as a performer, but now um, as we come to this day and age, I'm seeing it a lot more. And maybe it was just my ignorance, um, but now my eyes are, have been opened. And I mean, even if it's, even politics aside, we have a, an issue in our community where we are a lot more divided than we give ourselves credit for. And that's something that really needs to be addressed. Yeah, so this is a conversation that we're going to continue to have. I'm going to have to take it into the next where, you know, uh, wrap this up and leave it with, on that note. But, uh, you know, for all our viewers out there, you're probably, you probably are, are recognizing that this is a conversation that needs to be had in the LGBTQ community. And uh, it's going to take a lot more than 15 minutes, okay? <laughs> uh, so uh, let's, let's go ahead. You know, each, uh, each week now we have a new segment of our show and uh, we are, are honoring our LGBTQ history. This one's for you, Mo, okay? And uh, this is, we're featuring uh, something uh, called My Coming Out Story, okay? So uh, take a moment and watch this. Coming out for me uh, has, there have been definitely been moments when I can say I came out to somebody, but I do think it's continual in that I think gay people, uh, LGBTQ people in general, come out uh, about themselves in multiple situations throughout life. My first coming out was to my college roommate who years before had told me he was gay and after he graduated, uh, a few years later, I met him in New York City, which we were both in New York, and uh, said the words for the first time to anybody, I'm gay. I was very accepting of it. I came out to my family, my mom, my sister, my brother through letters in 96. Um, because I was volunteering at the AIDS quilt in DC, or, which is where I was living at the time, and it had a profound impact on me and felt that I, I could not live a hidden life from my family, at least, at that point. 
And I continue to come out in different situations, choosing to come out when it's appropriate for me, when I'm comfortable. And hopefully everybody has their experience coming out because it is very liberating as long as you have people around you to support you. We continue to celebrate LGBTQ History Month by telling your history. We thank Robbie Shore for that video sharing his coming out. What was your coming out like? Now that we've discussed a major headline, we play Saved by the Bell. <laughs> so, you know, Al, I know you love this. I'm going to use it this week, okay? And what it does, uh, Saved by the Bell, is it's a lightning round of LGBTQ topics in the news this week and other headlines. Uh, so everyone is going to get 60 to 90 seconds on each topic. 60 to 90 seconds, guys, okay? I'm going to be timing you. And, uh, and, and then if you... Um, you know, you pass, you're going to hear this little <laughs> ping, okay? And that means you have to be quiet and we have to move on, all right? So our first topic this week of Saved by the Bell is Oreo hits it out of the park with new LGBTQ acceptance commercial. Watch this. <laughs> Josie. <laughs> cool. Wow. Um, huh? Look at my eyes are watering here. Yeah. So, um, Where's let, the let tissue? Me let, me let me just jump in really quick and, and say something on this one. So um, I we kind of got put clips together. We kind of cut and paste this commercial. Um, we didn't show it in its entirety. I actually watched it in its entirety. If anybody has a chance to watch it in its entirety, I beg you to do so. Um, I am a hardened bitch of, of everybody on our regular cast. Um, Josie and I are the only ones on, on the regular cast. Everybody else is a guest right now. But of everybody on our regular cast, every single person on our cast has cried at some point over the two years that we've been on, <laughs> except for me. I'm not a crying bitch. But this um, commercial was so touching, so well done, so absolutely beautiful that I even shed a tear today, and that's a big deal. <laughs> it is such a beautiful commercial, and it really, really hits the heart because it really is something that I wish most families and most people could experience, which is the love and the embrace and the acceptance of one's family, especially when, when introducing a loved one into your life, um, into the family life. It's really beautiful. I, I suggest everybody go watch it. <laughs> All right. Well, that was the bell. You know, I mean, it would broke our hearts and here we are. And I know I can just see it on the faces of everyone on our panel. That was very touching. And thank you, Oreo, for um, a really well done and very thoughtful message. I think a lot of people need to hear that in the world today. 
Our, our next topic is uh, DC Comics magical ring-wearing hero Green Lantern will be openly gay in HBO's live-action reboot. Hmm. What do you guys think about that? Can we talk about the Oreo commercial? <laughs> <laughs> that was so cringy. That Oreo commercial was so cringy. I, I, I'm sorry. I, can I have a, a moment on that, please? It, uh, go ahead. And for me, it hit every ridiculous liberal point of view talking point. First of all, you've got, of course, you've got the black mother who's very open and accepting. She's obviously like the nicest character in the whole thing. And then you've got like the mixed race dad who can be persuaded because he's mixed race and he can whatever. And then you've got the nosy white bitch neighbor next door who's like the total like enemy through the whole thing she's got that crusty this look in her face got out she's of the that? white woman next door <laughs> and then what i love so i mean it was just it was wow. so ridiculous and it's so indicative i think of where the gay community is and where we still need to evolve to this idea that in 2020 we need our a grown person needs their father to go p paint their fence a rainbow color so that they can feel loved and accepted oh, is so okay. archaic and outdated and absurd it All right, I, I, I can ring you out right there. I want to say it's cringe than there were uh, feet on that fence. So as you can see, there are many opinions, but we have a few more seconds because so he took absurd. his time up with the, uh, uh, anyone wow. else want to comment on that Green Lantern? <sighs> All right. I just want to know what uh, <laughs> there, Just, we're going to move on to the next one, okay? Um, our next topic is killings of transgender Americans reach all-time high uh, rights groups in terms of their identity. Um, and it's not a preference. It is something that you are born with. Um, and when we talk about the difference between tolerance and acceptance, tolerance is eh, maybe I like you. The extreme version is I don't think you should live. And acceptance is like that what the dad did on the on the painting. Legacy matters. And when your upline, your legacy applauds you for being bold about who you are, it's amazing. It's a great feeling. But we're not having an honest, honest conversation about why these people are being killed. And that's the biggest problem here. So I paused it's not because and it they're was transgender. Still my turn and the bell didn't ding. So I'm going to continue talking. But I seconds. very much appreciate oh, you're finished. that Oreo. <laughs> I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. Uh, I, the, the fact of the matter is in the vast majority of these cases, first of all, let me start by saying that nobody deserves to be killed for any reason. Murder is wrong, and certainly nobody should be targeted based off of their identity, no way, shape, or form. But in the vast majority of these cases, if you look into them, these are drug deals gone wrong, and they are sex work acts that have gone wrong, and it has nothing to do with transgenderism okay, whatsoever. so we're moving on to the and next. And 67% of all statistics are made up. Uh, so thank you guys That's for participating true. in that conversation. <laughs> uh, again, 60 to 90 seconds, guys. Um, the next topic is New Zealand and Canada eyeing bans on conversion therapy. Good, absolutely. I think it's a good thing. I, I think it's a good thing. I'm quite sure that um, the Republican point of view is that this is a bad thing. Um, they would love to see conversion therapy. Um, implemented here in the united states that is of course part of their platform no it is um, not you know yes it is yes it is it's no, I, that's I, it's, that's it's, a it's, lie you don't, you're entitled like, to your opinion like, but not your own like, facts like, that's like, not true like, oh, child, that the religious right bullshit. loves a conversion like, therapy like, they're like, all about it my parents would love to see every bitch in a you, conversion therapy concentration you said camp. that was that part of their the platform and that's not true that is, it is it, 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 it was part of their platform in it's provably not true I, well, I, the platform well, is written prove, down. I mean, that's, you can look at it. I, and, and the platform that I read was written down as well. And that's exactly what it said. Uh, okay, well, we can just go to their website and check. The American Psychology Association okay. said this is yeah. it's dangerous. There's a lot of LGBT youth. They're prone to... I read it today. Was it 48% higher than uh, non-conversion therapy LGBT um, youth that kill themselves, commit suicide? I would no. like to give a they shout out to Ralph Bruno of the Born Perfect campaign. He has been actively participating and making the conversion therapy laws disappear in all of the 50 states of this country. In this country, so when we talk about boots to the ground, he's one of those, and I salute him as a hero. Thank you. I would just like to say too that we're all on the same page here. Uh, conversion therapy should be outlawed. It's wrong. It's evil. It doesn't work. It does harm to uh, to anybody who is uh, unfortunate enough to have to receive it. So I think we're all on the same page here. 
All right. Well, there you go. There you have it. Uh, so as you can see, Saved by the Bell is always a fun part of the evening. And as you can see, our hosts have a lot of opinions. Uh, but we're going to play another game. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's play one more game. Uh, we call this one Shag Mary Chop. It's a game that asks our hosts who and why and what they would want to do to three different people. So let's play. Uh, tonight's subjects are all sexy gingers. Uh, you know, Ooh. the red-headed hunks. Tonight, I hunks. all of them. Uh, Seth Fornia is our first sexy ginger. Okay, there you have it, folks. Mm. Uh, our next is Adam Robertson. I think he just did a superhero move. And then finally, we have athlete Blake Griffin, who's a hottie. All right. So uh, tonight we have our sexy gingers, and uh, who? Uh, let's. Who are we going to start with? Taisha, let's start with you tonight. Who would you shag? Who would you marry? And who would you chop? Um, does chop equal murder? Because I'm not into that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, like get rid of. How about chop about it? Chop any one of us a chair. <laughs> um, I think in terms of shag, I would do Blake Griffin. He comes off as like this nice, genuine guy who seems <laughs> affectionate. Um, and shagging, I would shag all three, but I wouldn't chop anyone. I don't. I don't know. I wouldn't. Who would Mar you marry? <laughs> would I marry? No, I would marry um Griffin. Oh, I would marry Griffin. Yeah, definitely would. So you're gonna shag Griffin before, and so. marry Griffin? Uh, I would fuck and marry. I mean, if I could fuck and marry him at the altar at the same time, like that would also be great because I have a religious fetish. But if I had to separate it, I would still do them both. <laughs> okay, so we're playing this game a little different tonight. There are three people, and I'm going to encourage everyone to shag, marry, and chop different <laughs> ones. Okay, uh, different folks. There's three people. Don't don't exclude here. We're not exclusionary here. I mean, I said I would shag everyone. Right. I would marry one, and I don't believe in chop. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Okay, Taisha, you don't want to chop anyone. I'm gonna respect your uh, your your desires in this moment and your wishes. Um, Mo, you know how to play this game, right? I do. I okay, do. so who are you gonna shag? Who are you gonna marry? And who are you gonna chop? Gingers, hmm, pumpkin spice, and everything nice. Um, I I'm a sucker for body hair, and I believe Seth had a little fur going on, so. I, I'm gonna pick him first for Mary, but Shag, definitely Blake, the athlete. Um, Shag. Shag and Blake. Fur, furry guy. So you're shagging Blake and you're... M marrying the fur. Seth. Seth. Seth, okay. And I guess the other one's getting the chop. <laughs> Adam, Adam, you're chopped, brother. All right, well, you know, listen, uh, you know, let's let's see. I I, I want to know, Brandon. If, if I think you know how to play this game, okay? You got three choices. You get to shag, marry, and chop one, two, or three, and uh, just tell us why. Okay. Who and why? All right. So I'm gonna choose to shag all three, and then I'm gonna <laughs> kill myself. <laughs> and I think that'll make everyone on this panel very happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, we that's my answer, and then I don't have to get married because. <laughs> <laughs> we have some rule breakers in the house tonight. Let me tell you, we're just playing a game, people. Okay, we're playing a game. <laughs> and uh, Power, come on. Bring it home for us. Bring it home for us. I know you know how to play it, but you're a rule breaker, too. You're probably going to play this your way as well. So who are you shagging? Who are you marrying? Okay, and who so are you chopping tonight? Okay, so I'm going to shag Seth. Um, I'm going to marry Blake. And um, unfortunately, that means I have to chop Adam. However, if Adam has a, a big dick, I will cheat on him. I'll cheat on um, Blake. With <laughs> oh, man. I think there's going to be a fight over at the altar of a Blake. Damn. <laughs> so many one of us want to marry him. So cute. Yeah, well, I, I mean, mean, I. Well, I think I like, he looks like he can throw me around and, you know, knock me up and knock me out. So, yeah, he's right up my alley, you know, <laughs> as far as husband material. Yeah, Seth has a nice little bubble butt in those, like, see-through yeah. little, uh, 
I know. I know you like that. Oh, my God. Uh, Mo. If there was an Ugo option, I would definitely choose Seth. Like, because I'm also a voyeur and an exhibition. He had so, me with that fur. Ooh, let me put him in a window with a red light. And I, mm, yes. All right. So now you're playing, right? Now you're playing. I love it, Taisha. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Well, you know, before we end the show, we introduce our sponsor. That's okay, guys. Let's wrap that up. Okay. We shagged, we married, and we chopped everyone we needed to. And before we end the show, we, we introduce our sponsor, Jed's Pizza. And the hosts in production are getting ready to enjoy this uh, delicious pizza. And it's always time. Uh, this, this one right here. Look at that. Woo. Mm, okay, yum. Al, uh, I think this is the cauliflower crust. So for those of you who are gluten-free out there, nice. the little veggie. Okay. And um, Al, did you see how easy that was to open the box? <laughs> I, I know you're watching tonight. So yeah. uh, <laughs> No fumbling, brother. No fumbling. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it is time for us to say goodnight. And, um, you know, before we do that, uh, we always like to hear from our hosts and and let the hosts uh, say goodnight to you. So um, I'm going to start tonight with Brandon. Well, I just want to thank everybody for having me on tonight. Thank you so much for having me be a guest. This has been really fun, actually. And uh, for anybody who's interested in what we're doing, uh, please check out walkawaycampaign.com. Join the Walkaway group on Facebook um, and, and learn a little bit more about what we're doing. You've probably heard some gross misrepresentations of what my group and I believe in in the press. Get to know us a little bit. Then you can hate us. Walkawaycampaign.com. <laughs> All right. And Mo? Well, I'm going to say... Uh, Good night to everybody. It's always great to be on the show. We missed you, Al. I'm going to reach out to the folks in the early voting states that are having to wait six, seven, eight hours because of all the voter suppression. Um, don't be fooled by those fake boxes the Republicans put out there in California. Stand, hydrate, stay in line as long as you have to, and vote. Taisha? Yeah, um, I want to give a shout out to all my viewers. I'm a guest on this show, and I, my one of my favorite quotes, which is from the Newsroom TV show, is there's nothing more powerful than a well-informed electorate. So please always look at things from an unbiased perspective before shaping your opinion as it relates to your ethics and morals and beliefs. And tonight... I'm going to leave it in virtual land with our host and our OG in the house, DJ Power Infinity. Well, um, first of all, I would like to say I am very proud as a new citizen to say I cast my vote yesterday. So I'm very, very happy about that. Um, Congratulations. But I would like to... Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. I would like to give a, a quick plug. Uh, next week, Monday and Tuesday, I and my two groups, uh, Culture Kingdom and Pump to Vote, are holding a virtual voters rally. We are going to be gathering some of the biggest um, and most outspoken names in our LGBT community, ranging from performers, RuPaul Drag Race um, girls to, um, you know, politicians. My, our own Josie Smith will be joining us and I will be able to uh, turn the tables and interview her. Um, so I would hope that everybody tune in. It's going to be next week, Monday and Tuesday, the 19th and the 20th um, at 7 o'clock, um, streaming live on Facebook. Um, and please make sure to get pumped up and get um, uh, motivated to go out there and vote. It's very important. All right. Well, you know this is this is this is what community looks like uh for all of our viewers out there we are so grateful that you continue to tune in each and every week uh and listen to the conversation at this table and um it, it you see the diversity of our perspective simply in this microcosm that we create for you each and every wednesday night uh so i'd like to say good night america you know, and remember, if it's important to you, it's happening out. <laughs>